And so I'm going to be adding maybe like, it'd be like com comparable to if you were an oil painter glazing that back rock with a little bit of like what would be a blue gray. I'm going to take a good painting and I'm going to make it better. And I'm going to show you how. Oh, okay. So you, it's not a bad painting you did. You're just going to take a good painting and <laughs> not make a bad it better. Painting. Okay. Well, that works. Right. All right. Well, that would yeah. work with the bad painting too. Let's do this. <laughs> so here we go. We've got my sketchbook, which is really important if you don't have a sketchbook. Writing notes, doing thumbnails, and uh, working on composition proportionally to the size that you're going to create here. I have a four by five inch sketch here, and it translates to an eight by 10 there. And I have some inspirational quotes over here on the side that are fun that make me think and, you know, make me feel, uh, you know, like inspired like this one, when you're moved by your own vision, your vision will move others. Oh, so I really, I really it. like that one. Right. And so here's also a little, a little thing I did where I, I reduced the painting to four by five and then put a tracing paper over so I could move it around and work with different designs. And we really practiced that in the last workshop I went to with Barbara Janicki, which was really awesome. She was amazing. So that is a good tool to have. Keep your sketchbook handy all the time. Well, here's and a comment from Tim Smith who says, I typically don't like revisiting the same painting more than once, but I recently had the same painting sell twice, long story. So this may be an opportunity to work towards your idea. All right. Yeah, I, I think it, we can learn a lot from it. And when you're continually trying to get better and um, become a, a masterful painter, then doing things like this are gonna be, I can only help. And so I've pulled out, I pulled out some pastels that uh, I would like to use in my painting. Oops, and there goes one on the floor. Um, and some colors that I think I'm going to, like I usually use in layer, but I like to approach each painting as a new piece and as its own painting and not get formulaic. But I'm going to start tell everybody, with... Uh, if you've never tried pastel, it's to die for. It's really a lot of fun. It is. Uh, thanks for saying that. Have you tried it, Eric? Have you been doing Oh, yeah, I've been doing it. Because I do pastel live, I wanted to make sure that I was learning it. So I've been doing uh, a lot of pastel. Oh, that's great. And a lot I'd of watercolor, et cetera. Yeah. Well, it'll be fun to see some of your pastels, Eric. So, all right. So I'm going to start. And um, one of the things that we're going in pastel anyway is you're going to vary your pressure on your pastels to get different brush marks, different marks on your paintings and different, um, I would start out very lightly and you can always add more, but I don't wanna fill up the tooth of my support, which this support actually holds a lot, a lot of layers. And so the, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gently drag up my, I want my distance to be, my distant water to be dark. So it really sure. sets off the spray. So I want to ask a question here real quick before you go too far into it. What uh -huh. we see on your iPad is the existing painting you're going to change. Yeah, this one is the one I did in plein air on location, okay. La Jolla, and it sold. And so, so this walk is us through thing. what you're thinking about changing on your panel so that we can have a feel for what might be different as you go along. Okay, that's great. I've been, I want to actually address that as well. So this I want to keep the same. I love the distant water, but this I want more drama in the surf. I want more shadows in the shadow part of the surf to really set off the spray, the white spray. And then <clears throat> I like the way this is designed, but I also want to get this water to match the sky up above. And I want to play with some different colors in this part of the surf here because I don't I want my lightest light to be this drama in the surf in the spray when that when that spray is hitting that back of those rocks and it's all drama I also want to design it so it keeps your eye in the painting and so this is moving your eye around I want to get some 
some atmosphere in between these rocks because there's a lot of, of spray in there. So those kind of like, I want to focus on th like three things that I really want to make better. Right. And so, and I want to keep the parts of the painting that are already really good, you know, that I like. So again, it's subject, it's, you know, subjective. So what you think is good is not necessarily what someone else thinks is good. But what I think is good is I like this distant water and go around where my surf is going to be, but it's okay if some of it shows through and it goes on top of it. Cause it's just going to make that spray even more dramatic and beautiful. And so I don't cover up my, especially with this particular board, this is called sand color. This is a sand color. And so I want some of that under the color of the board to come through because it just leaves a really cool layer and sparkle in, in the water. And then I'm gonna lightly go over where there would be some, some changes in the water because water is random. And it's, um, this is, I can't even tell you how light this is. It's just barely catching the tops of the surface. So, and then I can go back and go over it if I don't like it. But what I love about this board is the awesome texture on here grabs the top of your pastel and Lisa, it, uh, yes. Uh, I have to, I have to interrupt you because my audience is asking for another view. Could you hold up that picture you held up before so people can see what your original painting looked like? It's kind of, of hard to see on a small screen. Oh. Get that a little closer, closer back. There we go. All right. Wow. That's beautiful. Well, thank you. Okay. All right. All right. So I can put this on the side if you want, if you want me to put it right here, I can try yeah. and have both of them next to each other. Okay. But I, I don't want to dwell too much on this except to refer back to what I want to change. All right. And so the, but this is, this is basically how I started this one is with the water in the distance sketched out my sketched out my composition got my you know rule of thirds so i could have a focal point in one of these four areas the quadrants that intersect and i really like this area is where i want the drama so i can pump up the drama right in here and let the other parts not be as important maybe not as much detail down in here and so but let's see where we're going to see where this goes. Okay. And um, so this wave I really like back here. It shows that there's a lot of movement in the water, which there was. And so I'm going to go back with my dark pastel. I'll show you a close up. This is my darkest blue. And it's like an indigo. It's beautiful. And so I'm going to bring this uh, little wave here, which is darker. It's darker right here. So I'm going to indicate that a little bit here. Get the shape of a wave. It's really fun to do my research and watch the how waves move and how waves, um, the physics of waves. There's a little one back here. And if you're doing, if you're, if you're getting perspective correct, you've got a smaller wave and it's closer to this one because the perspective as things go back, they get closer together. And so there's more room here because you're looking down on it. So you see more space between these two waves. So you want to make sure and keep that in mind so that you have, uh, you know, a believable uh, composition, a believable painting. So they feel like they're right there with you at the ocean. There's a, great, a beautiful book, day. great book called The Life of Water. Oh, really? And it oh. talks about, it's very interesting. It talks about the physics of water. Yeah. Well, I better and, get and one of those. It teaches you cause... a lot about how light hits water. It's really good. Yeah. Oh, I'll have to get that. A hello to hello. Blick Art Materials, who's tuned in. Blick is a big sponsor of ours at the awesome. uh, Air Convention and also at many of our live events like Pastel Live coming up. Well, they're one of my favorite places to get art supplies. Yeah, so. I, I, I spend a fair amount of money there myself. <laughs> I do too. So this is one of my favorite colors. This is a, a beautiful aqua turquoise. This is for the sparkle and the close to this, I'm gonna pump that up a little bit, but I might go over it more, but I'm just indicating that I just love that color so much. And I gotta be sure not to overuse it. And uh, because as you can see, even my glasses are this color. And so um, it's one of my favorite. There's a there's a, a program for Aquaholics 
Aquaholics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. And so um, it's one of mine and Deborah's favorite colors, actually. It's in our logo, right. too. So My wife's anyway. favorite, favorite, too. Yeah, I love that color. So anyway, I'm working on, um, as you can see, I might not be explaining everything, but you can see I'm, I'm working on some of these shapes back here in the distance and um, just getting some of these wave shapes in here. There's a little bit of light always in the top of, uh, you know, where a wave is about to roll over. We're gonna, you're gonna see that when we, when we develop this beautiful color in this wave that's close to the rocks, the light coming through the, sh the most, Thinnest, thinnest part of the wave and the translucency. And um, let's see, I'm gonna do a, a little bit of shaping this, um, this one and just kind of getting a little piece of it, but it's dark, it's not, it's not gonna be my lightest light, but you're gonna see that this wave kind of rolls over. So my pastel follows the form of what, of what I'm painting too. So this wave rolling over is um, the form and there's a little bit of light in here. Let me see if I can get it light enough so that you can see there's a little bit, but I'm gonna not make it too important. So, and then I can pump up this color a little bit later. Let's see, I wanna do a little bit of that back here, just that, you know, that this wave taking the edge I use. Uh-oh. So it looks like we lost her. Maybe she'll come back. <laughs> you know, there she is. Oh, what happened? Your, your phone probably went, went dark. Yeah, I, went, I put it on Do Not Disturb, so I don't know um, <laughs> if I was getting a call or not. So um, I use all the different parts, different sides of the pastel. <clears throat> and so this is like, if this was a paintbrush and I was using this side here, this paintbrush would be huge. I mean, that's a big paintbrush. Yeah. But I use every side of my pastel. And sometimes it, um, it helps to use the broad side of your pastel so that you can uh, make marks that are not as detailed. So let's say that. And then there's a little bit of light back here. I want to be sure to capture that. If I don't like how much light that was, then I can go back. And I can do, uh, you know, go into, move into it a little bit more. Get a little bit of that in there. Okay, so I'm gonna um, move on to a different part of the wave. This is gonna be where my drama is. This is gonna be one of the last things I paint. So I'm gonna work on this part of my wave here. The darkest part of my wave is gonna be down here where the deepest part of the water and the thickest part of the wave is. And, um, I remember when I'm out painting, I do not want to mimic or like, I'll, I'll learn from what I've already done, but I want to approach each painting as its own painting, brand new, without um, getting formulaic and making, you know, making every painting look the same, have the same colors. I mean, it's gonna be a little bit of that be just because it's a wave and there's a lot of the same colors in it. But um, I want to approach each painting with new eyes, fresh eyes, and um, in its own unique, its own unique um, aspects of this painting. So, does it people say they have a hard time talking and painting at the same time? <laughs> uh, and chewing gum. And chewing gum. <laughs> I'm trying to remember everything I want to share with everybody so that. Um, I don't forget anything. So got some notes, but I can't always look at them at the same time that I'm painting. So I'm going to put some light in here. So I'm building up, what I'm doing is I'm building up the layers of this. I'm starting with dark, the darkest part of the wave. I'm working into the translucent part of the wave, but it's a push and pull. It's a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You go back into it. And that's the really cool thing about pastels is that they're very forgiving and they layer so nicely. And it helps if you do not put too much pressure on your pastels so that, <clears throat> excuse me, so that you um, have room to add more, you know, more layers. So I'm looking for 
some of my jade, kind of jade colors, kind of those beautiful emerald colors. I'm looking to see where those are in my pastel box. And I'm gonna gradually get into the greener part of the, this wave or the blue green part. Cause I want my wave to be a different color than the distance. So I'm gonna be adding more of those emerald colors that you see in the water when a wave is close up. So here's a nice color. This is a nice middle, middle value before it gets into that translucency. And you go up into, this is gonna be, it's really fun to create these unique shapes that are within the wave. And my wave is going like this. So I'm, my strokes and my mark making is following that form. So do we have any other questions, Eric? How are people doing in the audience there? I think everybody's doing just great. They're mesmerized. Well, good. That's the I mentioned goal. to everybody that I gave you the wrong name of the book and I'm trying to find the right name. Oh. But my apologies. What did you call it? The magic of water, but it's- I don't know what I called it. The secret life of water, but I looked it up on Amazon. <laughs> That's not the book that I read. So I'm trying to find it. I may have to go into the house. All right. Are you going to leave us? Are you going to go into the house? Well, you have to take us with you if you go into the house. Yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Let me get some of that. Here's real a light. question from Blick Art Materials. Any advice for achieving generous coverage without prematurely loading up the surface? Yeah, it's feather, feather light uh, touch. Is, uh, is the best way to do it is to is to really control your pressure on your pastels. But thank you for asking. That's really a nice, it's a great question. So a lot of people, uh, when they first start painting in pastel, they'll push really hard and get a lot of pastel into the tooth of their support. And you don't really need to do that. It's really a great idea to take your time and to build up your layers gradually so that you have room for the magic on top. So, cause there's going to be some magic on top and we want to make sure you get to see that and that that is the part that really shines. And if you, if you want to, you know, cause I want to see, there's going to be different things in the water. There's, there's seaweed in the water, there's sand in the water, there's rocks in the water, there's anim sea animals in the water. And so my goal is to, is to create layers so that you can imagine that there's going to be uh you know, what's in that water? You know, like, I want to see what's in that water. I want to be curious. And I want my fish. viewers to be curious. Fish. What'd you, fish? Fish. Yeah. Fish in the yeah. water. There is fish. Octop There's going to be fish. Octopi. Yeah, they're in there. They're in there, especially around these rocks. I bet there's a lot of them, actually. These rocks are so beautiful. So, all right. That is a good start on that and I can develop that. And then if I, I don't blend with my finger, by the way, this is a really important thing that a lot of pastelists that are um, pretty accomplished, the ones that I know that we've talked about this is that they don't do a whole lot of blending unless they're a real, like super hyper realism. They don't do a lot of blending with their hand. This is just from holding the pastel. The, the, if I blend or if I need to, um, kind of fade out a line. I'll use the back of my pinky finger just to lightly, lightly um, get some, you know, move a line around a little bit. But I do not blend with um, a brush. I'll wipe things off with a brush. Here's a I comment from R. Taylor. He does not say where he or she is from, but it says, I'm a newbie to pastel, but oh my goodness. Those watercolors alone will be drawing me in to buy more. Oh, that's well, you so can nice. get them at you can get them at blick.com. You can. You can get almost every brand at Dick Blick. Yep. Yeah. So they're they're getting a lot of free publicity today. Well, they're not free they because are. they're quite frankly, they're they're, they're supporting us. So we got they're a good sponsor. Own. Hello, Ireland. Wex Waterford, Ireland. How wonderful. Yeah. We got Ireland in the house. That's oh, yeah. awesome. It's usually uh, 16, 20 countries watching every day. Oh, my gosh. If you guys are watching from outside of the U.S., put something in the comments. Yeah, let us know where you're from. 
I mean, you can so put can something in how... the comments no matter where you're watching. Well, that's true. Yeah, we want to see where people are from. What's going on? Where is everybody from? So have you right. uh, basically lost your fingerprints by rubbing them on sanded paper? Yeah, no, I don't rub them on sanded paper, but I lost them with uh, lots of pastel on my fingers. There's a, um, there's a, yeah, I, but I, when I first started doing pastel, I actually did a lot of blending on a sanded surface and boy, were my fingertips raw. So yeah. I don't do that anymore. I've learned some new yes. techniques. I'm going to tell the police that the, if they can't find fingerprints on the scene, the first person <laughs> they talk to is a pastel artist. <laughs> Do you blend on um, your surfaces? Like, do you get... Uh... Well, you know, I'm relatively new at this. And the first thing I noticed is how, how my fingers were feeling a little rough because of yeah. the abuse. So I started, I did it with gloves, finally. Hello, Suffolk, England. Hello, Yorkshire, England. Hello, Guatemala. All right, wow. You guys. Oh, my gosh. This South is awesome. Australia. All right. And then there's awesome. Virginia and, and Canada, Nova Scotia, West Bank, British Columbia. All right. You guys are stepping up and telling us where you're from. That's great. That's wonderful. Susan great Hunter lovely. Guy says her fingertips bled once. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That is not good. So I'm working on the dark shadow side of the rocks now. So I'm getting some you know, some really beautiful colors in there that I want the rocks to glow when I put the layers over the top or add some highlights of sunlight. You can see the sun is hitting the top. So I'm playing with some, some under col some colors that are going to be underneath the, um, in the rocks. And then I'm going to start layering the rocks, uh, the, that shadow side of the rocks. And we try to connect our darks doesn't always work but you know like try to connect those d big dark shapes would you explain why um i think it it moves your eye around the painting if i'm if i'm right i think that it helps when you connect your dark shapes that you're going to be helping the viewer's eye to move around the painting and for some reason your brain really likes that but if somebody has a better answer i would love to hear it no, that is the exactly. correct. That is the correct answer. I was, was testing you. Oh, good. You. Okay. <laughs> All right. Good. I'm glad no, I I've, got that I've, right. You know, we could write a book from this show. We've now had probably seven, eight hundred artists on this show every day yeah. for, since COVID. Oh my and gosh. And all the techniques. You know, I've been painting for twenty plus years, and every single day I learn something new. Yeah. Ooh, you'll have to let me know what you learned today. All right. Let's see will. what what I if I taught you something new. Okay. I hope so. I'm hoping. So I'm just getting some really cool colors in there, purples and blues and browns in there. But my um, my darkest shat part of the shadows is going to be the ones that are closer to me. There's going to be atmosphere. There's going to be water in the air in front of these distant. Uh, rock shape shat the shadow part of these rocks and so I'm going to be adding maybe like it'd be like comp comparable to if you were an oil painter glazing that back rock with a little bit of like what would be a blue gray and I'll show you just gently like if I when when I get to that part this is going to help that sit back when I lightly drag over um, a distant watercolor that's like a blue gray Right. And so I'm just going to, I just gave you a little extra little fun um, preview of what that's going to look like. So the other thing I want to do is I want to get some shadows. I want to get shadows in my surf. So it's really important that, um, that I develop those random surf shadow patterns and remember where my light is. My light is upper left and it's kind of high in the sky. So um there are, oh, there are going to be some shadows in the water too. You know what? I'm going to indicate those first. So I'm going to get some shadow colors in the water from these rocks. And so I'm just going to put down some, just an indication of where those shadows are going to be in the water. And then 
we'll add more darks and lights as as we get um, ron is asking what kind of easel you're using i think it's a heilman is it not it totally is a heilman pastel box it's my favorite it's indestructible practically and so tell them you heard it on art school live maybe they'll advertise (laughs) yeah Oh, that'd be great. You know, I they did, usually I, are at the plein air convention. I, again, I haven't even looked to see all the vendors that are there, but we usually have 30, 40, 50 vendors selling and, and usually great discounts. Blick is always there. Yeah. I hope that Heilman is there. I, I actually demoed in their, um, their booth one year when we were in San Francisco. So I think this is my seventh or eighth convention so i haven't oh. missed i've only missed a couple Eric, i so remember a, uh, you went fan. through a bit of a tragedy in your life and then you came back ah. to the convention i was surprised <laughs> to see you there i um yeah you brought me up on stage to share that with everybody Thank yeah well that's the that. kind of guy i am <laughs> hello poland british columbia well, so I'm working like on that. some shadow shapes. Poland, huh? Okay. Awesome. So if you guys just tuned in, Lisa is trying to redo this painting and make it different, better. Hopefully uh, So better. she's trying some different techniques. She's not copying what, she, what you see there. No, I'm using this for inspiration just to see what I did, but I'm changing it. Yes, it's exactly right. So... I'm going to get a, um, a mid value color in the highlight of my rocks, but you know, there's going to be some dark areas of the, of the rocks too. So I can put a few of those things in there, a, a few of those random uh, little dark areas, but my rocks are going to be oranges and browns. And so then there's going to be here's, here's a, I'm just going to ask you a random question. This is prompted by Richard Allen, who's watching from Angus, Scotland. He was talking about, he's been working this week with oil pastels and oil paint. Uh, If somebody's not used to pastels, they're going to walk into a Blick store and go, oh, I think I'll buy oil pastels. Would you explain what kind of pastels you're using? I'm using dry, soft pastels. There's no oil in these pastels at all. This is a, um, a pure pigment that is held together with very little binder and it is immediately dry. It's the most archival of any medium. I don't know if you knew that. That might be a new one for you. That's, a, that's it's, the thing I learned today. Yep, there's something you learned. So um, the cool thing about pure pigment and very little binder, and it's a water-based binder, I think. Um, I can't remember exactly what the binder is, but that's okay, because somebody else can tell us. The um, But the pure pigment, as long as it's protected by something over it is already dry. It never cracks. It never yellows because it's basically pure pigment on a textured surface. If you're working this way, you know, there's people that work on paper that, um, that, uh, you know, they, they can still layer and they blend with brushes and things like that and fingers and stuff like that. But this is dry, soft pastel, pure pigment. So, and I, I shared to go with, out to Ampersand and, and I have never tried one of their pastel boards. I, oh, it's really great. I can bring you some to plein air convention if you want to try them. No, I'll go buy um, some. I'll go buy some. Okay. Thank you. All right. So it's very um, kind of you. I like to buy things and support our advertisers. Oh, good. That's a little too red back there. So that I'm going to cover up. I don't want it too. I don't want it too uh, warm in the distance again, but I can always layer that. And so I'm going to move this over a little bit so I can. So get over a to question: uh, You're painting mostly dark to light, is that correct? That's correct. It's not always that way, but usually because light sits over, <clears throat> light sits on top um, magically. You know when you get the um, when you get the light down first, but there. I mean when you get the dark down first. So. Question, do you use a fixative? I've heard few pastel pros say they ever use, or some say they never use fixative. Never, I never do. Yeah, and, and sometimes it dulls the colors. Sometimes, some, some people have a lot of success with it, especially if they need to set layers. Um, like I know some pastel artists that will use it in between layers so that they get um, more 
uh, the ability to have more layers on top of their painting. I don't have to, I don't have that problem maybe because I paint so <clears throat> lightly, you know, so I think that, um, and I tried fixative and I didn't have very much success with it. So I gave up on it pretty easily, pretty fast because I think you have to get used to that technique too, like with how to spray it on so that it doesn't yeah. leave spots and stuff like that. So, so Karen Schumacher says that on Pastel Live last August, there was an artist who used it in between layers. And so I'll have to yeah. go back and, and find out who that is. Or you can go back, Karen, you know, if you, uh, some people get a one year replay for Pastel Live. So if you have that, you go back. Okay, um, Blick know, says, usually the binder for soft pastel is a plant-derived gum, like gum arabic or gum tragacath, or a starch. Huh. Hey, you guys are so uh, helpful today. Thank you. That's really awesome. You know who um, I do know uses layers of fixative between their um, layers is Kim Lordier. She told me that she will sometimes use <clears throat> spray between layers so that she has more tooth comes back to um, her painting. So I'm going to go a little warmer on these rocks up here just because it's closer. It's got more, um, it's got more warmth in it and it'll bring it forward in the painting. And so I'm going to use some of these just closer up, get some of that warmth in there. Cause everything, even if you're using warm in the distance, it has to be, it has to relate to everything else in the painting. So you can use a warm in the distance, but it has to still sit back in the distance. So, so you, the way to do that is you make it warmer in the front. Yeah. So you're going to bring up oh no, the, the doctor. Um, yeah. It's okay. Sometimes that makes it better. Okay, Lisa, so, we're going to take a break. Okay. You need, you need a moment to go wash your hands. Uh, have a <laughs> stick of gum, do something, and we're gonna we're gonna hop away for just a second. All and, right, sounds uh, good. Tell everybody what's going on. All right. All right, sounds great. Do you know um, the, when I first took over the gallery, the Hughes Gallery, the Deborah Hughes Gallery, uh, five years ago? It's been it's been five years, Eric. And um, you had some wonderful, wonderful advice for me, and um, you said, "This is what this is what." I want to share with you. This is what you said to me. You said, you need to be visible locally, nationally, and then internationally. And so I've taken that to heart. And we're actually, I'm actually sponsoring. The gallery is celebrating its 25th anniversary this year. With uh, Deborah um, founded the gallery in 1998. And I took over five years ago. So that's you know, 25 years. And we are going to be putting something really special in everybody's swag bags this year and um, share with everybody the Hugh Skelly Gallery. So it's cool. really, yeah. Thank so you for I'm, that. I took your advice to heart and I'm sponsoring, you know, where else am I going to find a thousand plein air artists in one spot that I can share a plein air gallery with or plein air information about plein air and what we do here. Yeah, so. the swag bags are to die for. People don't, yeah. you know, if, they, if they never come before, they don't expect them. And yeah. there's a lot of goodies. Uh, the bags themselves are keepers. And yeah. um, they are, yeah. every year. So. And one. this year, because it's our 10th birthday, uh, we're actually putting, get, everybody's getting gifts from us. So they're getting gifts from you and they're getting gifts from us. How cool is that? That is awesome. That's wonderful. So, um, I'm working on layering some of them. I'm gonna come back to these rocks and, uh, but I'm gonna put some, put some colors into this surf before I develop the, mo the movement in the surf. I just wanna get some colors underneath there that um, I would see in a more shallow um, water that's moving around here. And then I'm gonna layer it with some other Colors like movement in here, like if we're doing some movement in the water, we're gonna just, this is not bright white, this is a blue, uh, like a very pale blue and then purple. And I wanna get some movement in the water. I wanna keep the shadow areas um, darker. So where the, where the sun is casting a shadow on the water in these areas. And I don't know how far we're gonna get with this painting. I'm hoping that I get to show you some really fun, techniques i don't know how much time we have left but you got about i'd say about five minutes 
about five minutes. Oh, I better get to the surf. That's yeah, the best stop part. Stop talking and start painting. <laughs> I'm going to do, I'm going to show you the magic part that this is, um, there's a couple different colors you can use in white. Well, there's a lot of different colors you can use in white and white is not always white. So the sun, white in sun has a lot of different colors in it. And so anything from a very pale uh, cad lemon yellow with a lot of white to a very uh, light pink. I mean, if you get a box of pastels that are the lightest lights, there's gonna be all these different shades of light and um, white. And so when you go to paint the whitest part of the surf, um, you're gonna use, I use, I love a warm white and I put a lot of shadow in here so that when the, when I, sh when I'm gonna show you how I get this spray to do what I want it to do, the, um, this, this technique of the white, the warm white on top of everything is gonna be really fun. So um, I'm gonna start over here on this side here. And I actually, I'm gonna move this over cause we don't really need this right now as much cause I know what, what direction I'm going in and I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with the top edge of my wave and I'm gonna very lightly, I'm gonna like use kind of a, like almost like if I had too much coffee and I'm gonna kind of follow this form around this little lip had a little spray off of it, which I really loved in the original painting. And you're gonna have lost and found edges. It's not gonna be a perfect uh, white edge all along there. And um, I'm gonna follow this beautiful shape of this wave and get inspired by this um, random shape of beautiful water. And it's gonna be, this is just gonna be the start of my, of my, um, the, the wave rolling over. So I'm gonna take some of this and make an edge here where this wave has been started to roll over here. And it's going to continue back over here, actually. And it's going to, because it has to make sense against the back of this rock in order for this to spray. This has to hit the back of this rock just right. And remember, this is where my focal point is. So I might put some more of this beautiful blue water here so that this against this, when I develop this edge of this rock, is just gonna sing with beauty. And so I'm gonna put some more of the dark down here. Let me know when I have about two minutes left so I can show this the spray. We're there. Uh, um, we're there, huh? Okay. All right, so I'm gonna take my warm white and I'm gonna take this, Terry Ludwig is one of my favorite pastels, plus they're square. So they have a nice edge on them that you can use to create some drama. Uh, and to create beautiful shapes. And I'm gonna take my feather light, feather light touch. And I'm going to gently drag over in the shape of where this would be rolling over. And then where the sun would be hitting on this side of, of these different shapes, there's gonna be, even if I did abstract shapes right now, like, and then I went up, whoops went up pastel with my, down. yeah, pastel down. That's gonna make nice little baby pastels for me. So um, this is a way, <laughs> that didn't work very well. Uh, this is going to be a shape of the sunlight. And you see, I'm not pushing, I'm pushing a little bit harder right now, but when I go to take this spray and go up, it's gonna create these beautiful, beautiful, um, very light. Very transparent. Spray. Yeah, they're transparent and they just catch the tops of the, um, of the waves. So I want this to um, splash up. I want this to splash up and this is in the way. So let me see if I can get this out of the way. But that is where the magic happens is the final layers of the spray. And I don't want my eye to go off. I'm bringing everything back in this direction so that it'll bring your eye back around and I'll put some little highlights here and there that the sun is catching the tops of that. And you see it's see-through. It's just giving such a beautiful, beautiful shape to some of these. And I can go back in with my shadow if I need more shadow in there and create more depth in there and get 
you know, so that it really is more believable. And then I'll develop this. So basically that's how you're gonna start the surf. And um, I'm gonna to continue to develop this and I'll send you a picture so you can share with everybody the finished painting and then the difference between the two. Here's the so, man with the hook. There's the hook, okay. The hook. All right. It's time, All come right. back on camera so we can see your smiling face and your your uh, aquaholic glasses. <laughs> what a beautiful right, I'm gallery. Gonna turn, I'm gonna turn this around. All right. See now, where's my, where is my, there it is. Can't. Hey, I wanna say thank you to Blick Art Materials for participating today. Uh, we like that. That's nice. We'd love to have you back. Okay, Lisa, get on camera. There we go. Yep. All right. Yeah, here, I'll get down go. here. There we go. Well, thank you for doing this, Lisa. You were an inspiration. You taught us about pastel. We're going to see you at the Plein Air Convention. Mm -hmm. uh, you were awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Eric. I really loved it. We put links to Hughes Skelly Gallery in the in the comments and to Lisa's website. You guys can find it all awesome. there. Lisa, big hugs at the convention. We'll see you there. The hugs. We'll see you there. Virtual hugs. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>